Hello, 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 and welcome to another Angry's Unit of the Reek. And today we're taking a look at the BT-7 tank. The BT tanks, or otherwise known as fast tanks, were a rather interesting Soviet tank series which entered into service in the 1930s. The whole idea was to have tanks which could, well, be fast, as the name suggests, and penetrate behind enemy lines and modern day cavalry tactics. You end up buying these tanks, or the original tank, the BT-1, from Christie, who was an American tank designer, who was developing this fancy Christie suspension, which essentially allowed tanks to go pretty bloody fast. The Soviets would end up buying one of these tanks off him, though they brought it as an agricultural tractor without any weaponry on it, so it didn't look like an arms deal to the American government. From this tank design, the BT-1, they would end up developing more, the BT-2, the BT-5, the BT-7. To put in perspective how fast this tank could go, it could go 100 kilometers an hour, which is pretty insane for a tank. Tanks these days don't go out fast. And as you've seen in the screen right now, you can see all the footage and trials that the Soviets put through these tanks by making it jump over silly obstacles. It probably wasn't very comfortable for the drivers inside. They also originally designed this tank for infantry to be riding on top of it in the classic Soviet fashion. You know, I couldn't imagine riding this tank and hanging on for dear life as it's going 100 kilometers an hour. They ended up making multiple thousands of these tanks. A few of the LA models would see service in the Spanish Civil War, but of course they'd really see an operational debut in Operation Barbarossa, where due to the poor training and how unprepared the Soviet Union was, a lot of these tanks were pretty much just destroyed in the first few months of the conflict. Yo. Some would survive from would sea service all the way to the end of the war, but with the introduction of the T-34 tank, and that really taking the frontline role, by 44, these were really rear echelon units. In-game, the BT-7 is a 25-point tank available exclusively to the 126th Mountain Corps, and it has two weapons. The weapon loadout is pretty standard for a Soviet light tank. You got a 45mm cannon with AP and high explosive shells. It's an alright little cannon, what is surprising is the amount of ammunition. I'm actually quite surprised they could fit 188 shells into such a small tank like this. And you got a single machine gun. Up down to the miscellaneous stat, has 25mm front armor, strong top armor, 15mm on the side and on the back. It goes 63km off road, 85km on the road, very bad self and very low optics capability. So in battle the BT-7 is the another light tank, like many other light tanks in the game. It fills in the niche role of being a close combat fire support vehicle which won't be blown up by machine gun fire but will die to pretty much anything else that can penetrate its rather thin armour. It can knock out other light vehicles and is not too terrible for infantry support. Especially this one, as it does have some high explosive shells, well, quite a lot of them. Not entirely powerful HE shells, but they're HE shells regardless. But of course, what makes the BT-7 a lot bit different compared to all the other tanks is the blistering speed that it can reach to. 63 kilometers off-road, that's, that's pretty damn fast. I mean, the only other tank-style vehicle that is faster is the M18 Hellcat, and that's in a whole other league. Of its own. So the BT-7 has speed, and a lot of it. This is really good for during flanking maneuvers, as you can push through forests and down roads to try to get behind the enemy. And also at the start of the match, where the BT-7s can actually keep up with the majority of the fast transport infantry vehicles, give you some pretty direct fire support right out the match begins. And for a cheap price, you can definitely throw in quite a few of them into your opening deployment. You do get a pretty good availability of these tanks, one card with 10 of them in A phase with a baseline one star veterancy. Not really something you'd want to get in B phase, I'd think. You don't get that much extra availability. And frankly, by B phase, these light vehicles really lose a lot of their punch as the front line gets more set up and static with a crap ton of anti-tank guns. And any anti-tank gun is going to blow you up. It can be a little bit hard fitting the BT-7 into the 126 core as you only have three tank slots and you may want to go a bit more of a safer route and take all three of the medium tanks, maybe a bit of leadership or the M3 leader, but I recommend personally trying to fit the BT-7 in here as it is a pretty useful cheap 
tank to have. And it also fits in rather around the 126's playstyle, as they are a pretty fast division, rich light, all about getting behind enemy lines and shooting stuff up. And the BT-7, just like the Tetrarch tank, can keep up with the infantry to give them some nice cheap fire support. It's not a great tank per se, I mean it's not going to win you battles, but when you do get those odd moments where the flank does open up, you can definitely barrel through a handful of these BT-7s and cause a bit of havoc. And hey, it's pretty fun to play with a tank that is this bloody fast. And well, I'm going to leave it off at that. This has been another Angry Shunnels Rika. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And usual, please just take it easy.